And then regarding the exhibition. So some of you might not know that Forest Lawn Museum is located within Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale. And our exhibition encompasses two of the museum's three galleries. And it has nearly a hundred objects, plus a sort of appendix uh, in the building next door, the enormous Hall of Crucifixion Resurrection. And the exhibition, it's divided chronologically and thematically, kind of, kind of like the book. And also like the book, it covers the 120 plus year history of Judson Studios. And there are more than a dozen objects in the exhibition that are also covered in the book, including, including some of the things right here on, on the back cover are, uh, are in the exhibition. So with that, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna walk you through the exhibition and give you a sneak peek inside Forest Lawn Museum. So let me, give me one second here. I'm gonna share, I'm going to optimize. Let's see, is that optimized? Is that already optimized? All right, um, then I'm going to maximize. So everyone sh should see essentially the poster uh, on the screen. You see David and Steffi, you see that right yep. there? Okay, great, great. Um, so the, the poster art there, it's a work by Marco Zamora and we'll cover that that's in uh, one of the later sections of the exhibition. And we begin here with two incredible watercolors from uh, local churches in Los Angeles. And the one on the left there that we're gonna zoom into is actually St. James Episcopal Church. This is from the early 1920s. The church is in what is now Koreatown. And just the incredible striking detail of these watercolors is really impressive. So it's nice to have them on the sort of welcome wall of the exhibition. And then the first major section is Judson Studios, uh, the early years. And we begin with some of the early photographs Right here we have uh, William Lees Judson, who is the always dapper uh, founder of Judson Studios. He founded it with three of his sons. If you think he looks a little bit like Mark Twain, uh, he was born just about 10 years after him. So that gives, gives you a sense of uh, his timeline there. And he was a plain air painter. Uh, and he also did some uh, stained glass. And this is actually a, a watercolor uh, for a stained glass uh, signed right there in the corner by W.L. Judson. Um, this is one of the earliest pieces in the exhibition. And this right here is actually the earliest Judson window in the exhibition. It's in the early 20th century. And the face, it's this really stunning polychrome angel face. And the rest of the figure, the sort of gown and drapery are actually opalescent staying, opalescent glass, which is this sort of milky iridescent style sort of mastered by Tiffany Studios in the early 20, late 19th, early 20th century, uh, really popular during that time period. And the artist who did this actually, uh, A.E. Brain actually came from Tiffany Studios. Take a look at the sort of stamens of the flowers there. They're actually three dimensional metals. A lot of really neat details in these artworks. And then these are two uh, works, a watercolor and a window by a guy named Frederick Wilson, and he was actually the head liturgical designer for Tiffany Studios in New York for many, many years. Then he spent the last decade plus of his career in Los Angeles working with Judson Studios, really sort of daring use of light and uh, line, light color and line, really, really impressive. Uh, so we have a watercolor right there. And then right next to it, we have uh, a memorial window, really beautiful uh, colors there. And then I wanted to sort of give viewers a sense of the process of stained glass. And so we have the full color design, um, watercolor by Frederick Wilson there, but then we also have um, car full scale cartoons. On the right, that's a full scale cartoon next to a stained glass window. So it sh shows you, you know, a little bit the steps in making stained glass. And I love the really nice line work there. And then the sort of full Technicolor uh, stained glass window. The one portion of the exhibition that is not by Judson Studios is already installed in the museum walls. We have, Forest Lawn Museum has a collection of medieval and Renaissance stained glass that we purchased from Hearst Castle in the 1950s. So we have sort of two, actually three full walls. That's two of them. And we'll see the third one in a second. And these are pieces that range from the 1300s all the way to the 1600s from France and Germany. These are some of the later Renaissance pieces. Um, this is about 12 feet tall, really, really striking. And it was great to be able to compare, you know, Judson's traditional liturgical style with actual sort of Gothic and Renaissance stained glass. This is sort of the masterpiece of the group. 
This is called the Durer window. And it's done based on drawings by the uh, German Renaissance artist, Albrecht Durer. And if you're not familiar with him, he's sort of the Leonardo da Vinci of Germany. He was just a, a real, real um, high point in German Renaissance. His, his draftsmanship was just absolutely incredible. The details on the faces are just really, really impressive. So it's nice to kind of compare and contrast those to the Judson pieces. And the next section is style in the early 20th century. And we're looking at sort of the Beaux-Arts style and the arts and crafts style. Um, this triptych right here, these three roundels have never before been exhibited. And I love getting up close with this one, these beautiful sort of coral colors of her robes, uh, the really ornate Beaux-Arts style, the sort of classical elements that you'd see in you know, a grand hotel um, or you know, a grand library or something like that from you know, late 19th, early 20th century. Um, and that was a style Judson worked in a lot in the early 20th century. A couple of domes right here. I love these little touches of white gouache, uh, this sort of flex of paint on there. It's the light sort of uh, darting through, uh, through the ceiling there. And then sort of looking directly from below, uh, another design for early dome. And then this is actually a photo in the exhibition of a dome by Judson Studios in the Natural History Museum in Exhibition Park. And this is a later dome. They've done a lot of domes throughout the history. This is in the 1970s. And this was done by Marion Sampler, a uh, prominent abstract artist uh, who worked with Judson Studios on a couple of projects. This and also uh, Pacific Coast Plaza, actually the shopping center. These are some of the arts and crafts style uh, drawings and windows. Uh, the one on the right here, it's actually uh, the carp window. And I love this detail of the bubbles in the glass is literally the bubbles that the fish seem to be uh, exhaling are actual bubbles mouth blown into the glass. And then the reeds are the lead. So the sort of material elements and the subject matter really sort of come together in a very clever way. And then we look at glass in the modern era as we step into the next gallery. Um, we're looking first here at Frank Lloyd Wright and then the Air Force Academy uh, sort of mid-century uh, chapel. This is a window from the Ennis House and we have it mounted in an LED frame. And I took this photo right here of it on the wall and it really appears to be sort of just floating on the wall. So I'm really pleased with how, how things look in the gallery. These are a few photos by Alexander Verdikoff, who's a really talented architectural photographer. It's a Hollyhock House and the Ennis House. And then these right here are pieces from the Air Force Academy Cadet Chapel. Instead of stained glass, the chapel uses um, what's called faceted glass or slabs of glass, dalle de verre. These dolls are literally French for slab. And it's just thousands and thousands of pieces of glass, slabs of glass. They were put in these sort of cassettes and these cassettes were hauled up onto the exoskeleton of this space age chapel. You can see some of the workers from these archival photos. Um, and the end result is stunning. It's almost like if you said, you know, make a gothic church, but do it for Star Wars. It's sort of like this the most literal way you could do that. It's a really stunning church. It's under renovation now. Um, and Judson actually is, is working on, on the window. So I'm curious to hear how that's going, um, David. And then the next part of the exhibition is called the Fusing Revolution. And this has been a big part of Judson Studios for the last few years. This is the face of Christ. It's five feet tall. And it is the original trial piece for the resurrection window, which is the biggest project uh, Judson's done. It's nearly a hundred feet wide. It's for this enormous church in Kansas. And instead of simply painting on glass, this is two of the artists, Tim Carey on the left and Narcissus Qualiata on the right. Instead of simply painting, you're actually taking granulated glass or frit and you're mixing it and then you're melting that together and it's literally fusing together in the kiln. Um, this is a huge technological and sort of stylistic jump. And so it's great to have that, that uh, original trial piece for the face of Christ. And you can see the, this is the installation of it. Um, and then this is as uh, Tim and Narcissus are working on it in the studio. And when Tim was finished with that project, he was so tired of working on liturgical subject matter that he turned to a personal, personal passion, which was the LA Lakers. And he did this window in fused glass of Kobe Bryant. And this was done right after Kobe retired in uh, 2016. And we actually did choose for this to be in, we selected it for the exhibition actually prior to Kobe passing away. And it's actually, it's a nice way to be able to honor him to include this in here. And it's, it's, it's a really 
sort of stunning, uh, stunning portrait. And then these are a series of domes done by uh, Narcissus and Judson Studios. And the large piece in the center, this is actually the original watercolor for the dome that you see on the right there. And this is a fully fused glass dome. So it's not painted glass, it's fused glass, water jet cut, sort of like they did every single cutting edge technique and th uh, threw it at this project. And the, the result is, is very cool. And then these are a couple other pieces by Narcissus. Narcissus is sort of the godfather of fused glass, the sort of elder statesman of the fused glass world. He's also, I believe his title is the uh, director of innovation, I believe, for Judson Studios. And a lot of his work is sort of sci-fi or fantasy infused. And these two pieces uh, are from his Mediterranean Treasure, Treasures series. And it's uh, reimagining ancient Greco-Roman statues submerged underwater and sort of being taken over by the elements. And then the next part is called Stained Glass Remixed. And for about five minutes, this was going to be the title of the exhibition. Actually, I believe um, Andrea and Kyle, uh, a couple of uh, employees, staff members at Judson actually said, oh, it's like Stained Glass Remixed. And we're like, that's such a cool idea. And then we're like, that doesn't actually cover the whole, the whole exhibition. So we, we use it as a section, but I'm really, I really love uh, this part of the exhibition. This is the piece by Marco Zamora that's on the uh, poster. And it was chosen for the poster because it sort of, it so quickly encapsulates brand new cutting edge techniques and very old, very traditional. You have the, the Latin script, the Gothic style, uh, amor fati, that means love of fate or love your fate. And then you have this sort of bright, almost like gumball style in uh, very close up in the, uh, in the child's uh, clothing. These are uh, a couple pieces by a guy named Elmac. Uh, or Miles McGregor. He's a graphic artist, a muralist, a graffiti artist, and his line work is just absolutely stunning. Look as you get closer here. I mean, he's clearly a figurative artist, but when you get close, like it's almost these little sort of whirlpools uh, of lines. It's, it's really, really delicate work. And then the next piece is an enormous piece by David Flores, who's also a muralist. The piece is actually entitled uh, The Muralist, and you can see the the respirator around the neck, sort of staring up at the creation. David is, he's a real character uh, and he got to start in sort of skateboard art and graffiti and murals. And he has this sort of segmented styles. All of his work sort of has these black segmented lines. So it translates really well to stained glass. And then this little pooch on the side there, um, David texted me one day and he said, hey, are you at the museum? I'll be there in uh, 20 minutes. And he's like, here you go. And that's how this piece got in the exhibition. Uh, I think it, it's so bright and vibrant. It's, it's a Savarsky crystal covered dog, um, but it really does sort of show off his very, his very um, you know, sort of over the top bright style. Here's an up close view. You can see the lead lines in there. So it's sort of traditional stained glass elements. And then the back, you get this fused glass, sort of swaths of fused glass. These two pieces right here, are by an artist based out of Long Beach named Shea Bredemus. Shea may or may not be with us on the, on the Zoom call tonight. Um, I, I believe he RSVP'd. Um, and Shea is just really talented. His figures are so, so delicate. When you look really close at this fused glass piece, you, it feels like the figure is actually breathing. Um, I really, this is one of my favorites in the show. And then next to it, he did another piece specifically for this exhibition. Um, it's called Ascension of the Spirit. I took him on a behind the scenes tour of our great mausoleum. And we have you know, dozens and dozens of statues, all these 11 different terraces, all these staircases and lots of classical and neoclassical architecture. He was so inspired by that, that he made this piece. And the figures are supposed to be sort of uh, um, you know, reminiscent of statues or spirits or sort of both. So you get that feel of the great mausoleum and then the frame itself uh, he collaborated with a obviously specialist frame designer. It's really, really impressive piece. This is the first time it's ever been exhibited. So very excited to show that off. And right next to him, we have three pieces by Joe Gurgis, who is on, is on the call tonight. And this piece is brand new. It was finished over the summer. It was going to be finished right before the show started, um, but it was actually finished over the summer. It's over five feet tall. Uh, and Joe um, was, he, he teaches art, he's a painter, he's, uh, he does etchings, a lot of different media, now glass art, and he actually taught Shea at Laguna College of Art and Design, so it's neat to have sort of the teacher and student 
uh, as peers right next to each other. Uh, he's a printmaker and you see the sort of the Japanese wave in the background there and then the more traditional European inspiration with the struggling stag figure um, is so dramatic and it's it's not about death there's a skull down there it's more about sort of rebirth regeneration um, sort of cycles of life and then yeah I love the water is very dramatic and then right here this is actually uh we included the original sketch. I was very, very kind of Joe to include that. And you see a couple elements, the, the mushrooms falling, sort of about, you know, regeneration. Those actually were not included in the final piece, but it's neat to sort of compare and contrast initial vision and final piece. These two lanterns are by Danny Tall, who is a Highland Park based artist, multimedia artist. And these are really great. They really sort of anchor the space. Um, they're inspired by Anthony Gaudi, the uh, Catalan artist, and they have that sort of distorted Gothic, almost psychedelic Gothic feel to them. They're very cool. And the pieces on the ground are by Alice Wang, who is an another LA-based artist. And these are, have to be sort of the most different uh, compared to any other piece in the entire exhibition. The reflections of the other artworks are really great. They're sort of, uh, Alice works in a lot of different media, and they're kind of, um, there's sort of like an extraterrestrial ooze that's on the ground. And I knew they would reflect the other artworks, but they've actually sort of ex surpassed my, my expectations. Uh, that's the face of Christ reflected and distorted right there. And then this series, I believe these are by, or I know these are by Jane Rucker. I believe Jane is on the call with us tonight. Um, it's a series of chairs dedicated to Elizabeth Milbank Anderson. And she was an early 20th century public health advocate. Um, and these include stained glass, fused glass, sort of inserted into these antique chairs, and it creates this sort of conversation piece, sort of the, the sort of counter anchor, counterweight at the other end of a very large, very large gallery. And these are fused glass and stained glass in them. And then the final section is Judson Studios in the Hall of Crucifixion and Resurrection. So right next to the museum, so it's the museum on the right and the Hall of Crucifixion and Resurrection on the left. And Judson did the windows for these from 1949 to 1951. The building was built to house this enormous 195 foot wide painting of the crucifixion. But then you enter through this Gothic entranceway inspired by Notre Dame Cathedral and Judson did all of these. So it's great to get up close and personal in the galleries with the pieces and then see them sort of installed in a proper uh, grand context. And that's the, the 11 foot wide rose window right there. So you sort of get best of both worlds um, in the exhibition. That's close up of the rose window. And uh, I think rose windows look cool from the outside. That was me playing with my drone over the summer. Uh, and these are, these are some, some up close shots right there. That concludes my little tour. So I don't want to uh, hog the time too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to